Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people. Okay. <laughs> Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, people always say, man, why do you seem to be so happy? You know, or How, how's your day going? I tell you what, if I have a couple of things it's going to be a great day. If I am blessed to, first of all, wake up and be next to my bride of 21 years, my dream girl that I fell in love with back in my days in JMU, took about 19 years to wear her down, but I finally got her. And I'm physically able to get out of bed. I can deal with everything else. I can literally deal with everything else. So that's why I'm excited. I'm excited because I'm here, I'm with you guys, and I have this opportunity because of the YouTube. I never imagined in my life that I'd be doing something like this, especially pissing off Eagle fans. That's something that I just love. I love doing that. So here we are. This is the, uh, the sad time of the year because we got a little taste. We got a little taste of the NFL, you know, with the OTAs and everything else. And unfortunately, let me flip this on. Unfortunately, school's out for summer, the six weeks break. Uh, the NFL PA is working on an idea that instead of having the OTAs like we have, we get a tease there, that instead that they're just going to start doing, um, OTAs like middle of June and carry on through um, into training camp, ramp it up. And honestly, I think that that is one way that I think that's the best idea that they've had because it's a way of getting away from, I think, a lot of the soft tissue injuries because you're starting off easy. Because here's the thing, you've now started stretching the muscles, getting them going and everything else. Maybe you had enough time to heal. Maybe you didn't. But now you're going to go ahead and stop for six weeks. And now your body's got to ramp back up again. And so it's kind of madness there. And so maybe that is actually a good thing to do. Um, it would be great for us fans because literally we say, okay, we got nothing to do till June. We actually have a real off season. The players have more time to heal. You know, when somebody like Diggs is working on getting his knee back, he's just got plenty of time to rest and start ramping it up and things, but we'll see where that goes. Now, here's where it's interesting because there's all the speculation here. So, here we have a proposed trade by an NFL insider. This isn't coming from the Cowboys. This isn't coming from the Packers. This is a proposed. This is what somebody is saying. And I question if you like this idea or not. Instead of paying C.D. Lamb, and there is, there is some... When you think about paying a player, maxing out a contract and things, the question you have to ask is, is that going to help you win? You could look at the Kansas City Chiefs that let Tariq Hill go, where he, at the time, maxed out his contract with the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins and Tua, they went all in. They didn't win a playoff game yet. And here it is. You see Kansas City wins the Super Bowl without paying him. You can look at our own situation from years ago with Des Bryant. We paid Des Bryant. After his contract happened, he kind of stayed injured, and Tony Romo was kind of out, and he was on his tail, on, on his way out. You could look at us when we paid Miles Austin, who had a great year, but had hamstring issues. We paid him, and he was gone within two years. And you can even look at, say, running backs, because... Marion Barber, at the time, the Cowboys paid him, I think, a six-year, $53 million contract, and it just blew up in their face. So the question is, is, are you better off paying one guy so much money or spreading the wealth around? So with this 
proposed trade to the Green Bay Packers. CeeDee Lamb goes to Green Bay, and the Cowboys get either Romeo Dobbs or Christian Watson, plus Jalen Reed and a 25 second round pick. Do you make that move? Do you look at this and say, well, we're going to take a big step back at wide receivers. We'll get a second round pick. And see, I'm going to tell you right now, this deal for me is a no deal just because it's a second round pick. Uh, Bro, second round picks and Cowboys, man, are like oil and water. They just don't mix. Second round picks, you can go through about the last 10 years and the Cowboys have about a 20% chance of that player being on the roster for more than a couple years. Sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm keeping C.D. Lamb on that one. Now, if they said it was like two threes or a one, okay, then I might do so. But to me, that second round pick is garbage. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm No, 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 no. And more than likely, Green Bay will be a good team. And which case, that's a late second round, so it's really like a third round. So, no, no, I'm not making that deal. Also, here's where we also have from Ernie, the Cowboys fan, who 22 hours ago said he just got a text from a source inside the Cowboys front office. News coming soon in relation to C.D. Lamb's contract extension. Stay ready. Got my head on swivel. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So, in other words, nobody really knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Only people know are CD Lambs, CD Lamb, his agent, and the Dallas Cowboys. That's it. So, we have to wait and see, just like everybody else. We're just going to be sitting here waiting. And here's a little take from Albert Breer, one of those incel insiders who. He's scratching his head. Playing season where contracts get done and place, uh, and then obviously have ripple effects throughout the entire league. And Justin Jefferson's contract clearly is that. And I want to talk about yep. two teams that places uh, uh, now the, right in the middle of this pond of the ripple effect. And one is the Dallas Cowboys and CeeDee Lamb. What is going on yeah. there? Why why aren't the Cowboys more active in getting something done right away instead of letting the market reset itself multiple times over from it doesn't matter at this point. AJ Brown and Amon Ross St. Brown to now Justin Jefferson? It doesn't make any sense, right? It's, and, and it's not just CD either, by the way, Rich. It's it's also um it's also Micah Parsons because Justin Jefferson didn't just reset the receiver market he reset the market for non-quarterbacks and beating out nick bosa and getting to 35 million where nick was at, 20, at, at 34 you know now micah parsons ask is going to be to leapfrog justin jefferson which you know if you're micah parsons now do you ask for 40 million per um Ooh. i think you'd be well within your rights to do that um and cd lamb like may not be the receiver justin jefferson is but he had a borderline historic year last year. What was it? 135 catches and 1,700 yards. Just insane, right? Well, he definitely so, has ability to stake claim to saying he should beat Justin Jefferson's contract, Albert. He definitely yeah, has that. You could say that, yeah. I mean, no like he doubt. hasn't been. He hasn't had. He hasn't had the consistent like you know like he hasn't done it four years in a row the way Justin. Je I mean, Jeff Justin Jefferson's like sort of in a class by himself yes. as far as how he's produced over the first four years. But, yeah, I mean, where C.D. Lamb is right now and where he was last year, you know, certainly you could say he's in that class. And so, you know, now you're talking about an outlay of, what, like 70, 75 million per year between the mm. two of those guys, and you haven't even gotten to the fact that your quarterback's in a contract year. And, you know, you connect that to the comment that Jerry Jones made at the start of the offseason all in. This is an amazing fact. I, I was trying to kind of <laughs> – Amazing. Because nobody fact. would argue the Cowboys are uh, have been a bad franchise for the last 15 years, right? Nobody would argue that. Um, so I, I, I sort of thought through this over the last two days, and I, I want to look something up that kind of would encapsulate it. This is an amazing fact that I was able to figure out, right? So uh, since 2007, right, which is when was Wade Phillips' first year in Dallas, the Cowboys are number six in wins in the NFL, okay? 
they're ahead of the Eagles, they're ahead of the Chiefs, they're ahead of like some big time, big time teams, right? So over the last that's 17 seasons, they are sixth in the NFL in wins. And they have the fourth longest conference championship game drought. And the only match. teams that have longer droughts than them. They haven't been in the conference championship game in a longer period of time. The NFL's final four are the Dolphins, Commanders, and Lions. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, think about that. You have the six most wins, yet you have the fourth longest drought not having been in the final four. Mm. So what does that tell you about where they are? It's They've been close. They've had teams that can compete on that level. But are they striking when the iron's hot? And, you know, they ran into this with they ran into this with Zach Martin, where they had to pay him. They had to pay a tax on him because they waited on him. And they ran into this with Demarcus Lawrence. And certainly the last time around, they ran into this with Dak Prescott. And I just can't wrap my head around why they aren't. Why, why, why they haven't been more aggressive with these teams, especially when there's a team right there in their division. And we've talked about this, Rich, with the Eagles, how the Eagles have gotten ahead consistently of the market on so many players. and They've been able to keep teams together as a result of it. So. I don't know what's going to happen with C.D. Lamb and, and Micah Parsons over the next two or three months, and, and Dak Prescott passed that. But, um, you know, I certainly know, like, the ship sailed now as far as, way, as, far as being ag- aggressive, you know, like, because that market has shifted, and Justin Jefferson getting paid was sort of the big piece. And, you know, you wait a little bit longer than Jamar Chase is going to get paid. And you don't think Jamar Chase and – Justin Jefferson are cahoots on the contract situation, then you don't know their relationship. You know, Jamar, J- Jamar Chase probably gets 36, 37 million a year. Catch the Rich Eisen show wow. every single day. Wow. Jamar Chase probably gets 36, 37. Wow. Okay. So that's where we are with this situation. But I think the Cowboys, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter to the Cowboys what you think. It doesn't matter to them how much you think that they need to hurry up and get shit done. They're going to do things at their own time. Now, one other thing I want to touch on here um, before I get out of here, because, you know, we've got so many Eagles that love being here. We've got so many Eagle fans that love being here. And I um, like to have some news for them. Now, when I say something about Jalen Hurts and stuff like that, I'm just a hater. And it's like, don't, 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 don't deal with the messenger. Deal with the message. Now, again, I got no dog in the fight when it comes to the Eagles and Kellen Moore. But I will say, didn't we tell y'all so? Listen to these guys here. Why is my... Had, um, got, like, interviewed at the practices or something like that. I never asked him about the new offense, uh, you know, with the new offensive coordinator and... Uh, Check this out. Yeah, I think I think you know this whole entire off season um, it's been about learning, um, learning, learning, and taking in a new knowledge, new perspective, um, and the minds that we have in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think throughout the whole entire thing, that's kind of been the emphasis. You know, you get to a point where you kind of feel. Um, Hey, I'm gonna I'm I'm feel comfortable with this. I'm gonna like this, but um, that time comes where you can rep it, rep it, rep it later on. But you know, right now it's been a um, been a lot of new inventory in. Um, majority of it, you know, probably ninety five percent of it being new. Um, 95 right, right there, baby. Yeah, I love yep. it. Ninety five percent of it being new, uh, Sean. Explain to Smitty and explain to everybody out there. The install process, and uh, Smitty, we can break it down, but the install process for a new coordinator coming into a new team, not just getting the QB to understand the verbiage, the signs, the the language, the the, uh, everything that's entailed with it. And and number one, I I always install inside out, making sure that we install the protection first with the Q especially, and then tie that in with the inside run game, tie that in with the RPO and the play pass or the ride and glide or whatever you want to call it. And then we throw our outside zone and outside run game in with boots and naked. I've always been that type of installer. Um, where are you at with this 95% of the, t- of the offense being new and, and changed? And, and, and he can handle it. Uh, Listen Taylor to Hurst this guy. Very, very cerebral kid. It's not a, it, I don't see him having any issues. Do you think it's a good thing that we're basically throwing out the old, all new 
Uh, where are you at with that take? Hurts is pissed off. <laughs> Hurts is pissed off. He's mad, he's mad as a damn chick. I love it. On leash and finally got off to see some dogs he don't know. Like, he pissed off. When you sign a five-year, $255 million contract, the last damn thing you want to do every freaking offseason is learn a new offense. Mm. He went to the Super Bowl with Shane Steichen. Instead of that offseason being able to really hone in on what he did well and did bad, he had to learn all the new things Brian Johnson wanted to put in. That experiment didn't work. Now, after getting this big money, after playing an MVP caliber game in the Super Bowl, he got to spend his offseason learning a whole nother system. That's three in three years. And I know Brian's system was completely different than Steichen's, but it was different. And he's pissed off. You don't sign a guy to a quarter billion dollars and then tell him you got to spend every offseason learning. That you can see it. <laughs> he's pissed off. This oh. offseason should not be about terminology and new concepts and trying to figure out what oh. Kellen Moore wants and thinks. Ooh. This should be about him refining the things he does really well and improving the things that he struggled with last year. I had to deal with it. I had four coordinators my first four years in Tampa. As a rookie quarterback, JB, I had Mike Shula. Second year quarterback, I had Les Stuckel. Third mm. year quarterback, I had Clyde Christensen. Mm. Fourth year, I had John Gruden. I know what that's like. It's not fun. It, it, it's not fun, especially, and I didn't, hell, I didn't even make the five year part of his 255 million. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to be in that building going through all this terminology and he pissed off you could tell it's let me ask you this because i think experience is the best wow. teacher so like when you were going through that that new offense how long did it take you within that season to really get to a point where like okay i'm now i'm comfortable and now i fully understand the actual offense like did you did you get to that point before the season started or did it actually take a few games for you to be like all right now i'm finally in the flow Shit, based on the fact that I got fired after my first year starting, hell, I guess I didn't really get a chance <laughs> to fired out the second time. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, it, it, it's not ideal. I'm just telling you. And it's not about how long it takes you to learn it. It's about the frustration of having to even attempt to learn it. Right, right. Because there's only like three or four, like, systems in the National Football League. Like, they all come from these trees, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you got the Andy Reid tree over here. You know, then you got the Patriot tree over here. Like, it's not a whole bunch of Shanahan, different offensive yeah. schemes. Yeah. It's just the terminology is different. And when you yeah. call one thing scat, it sucks to have to go in and mentally switch it to switch. Mm. Right, right, right. So, let me ask you this uh, real quick. I'm gonna, you jump in, JB. Should we be concerned for Jalen Hurts and the Eagles in terms of them having another quote unquote down year? I know last year they went eleven and six, I believe, and made it to the playoffs, but all year long, even with those wins, we were, we were you guys are watching the games, they didn't really look like the Eagles from the previous season and obviously got knocked out pretty you know, pretty quickly there in the playoffs. Like with this going on and ninety five percent of the offense being new, like are do you have concerns? Absolutely, because if Jalen Hurts is pissed, what do you think AJ Brown is? <laughs> The only person probably not mad is Saquon Barkley because this guy. Okay, so Eagle fans, don't 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 get mad at me. Don't 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 get mad at me. Don't don't get mad at me. I'm not the one that's uh, that's. Uh, listen, this ain't me. I'm just passing it on to you guys. You guys just don't seem to want to hear it. All right, good people. I got some work to do. Don't forget today, five o'clock Eastern, we have our call-in show. Um, and we're going to be doing something else new here, too. We're going to be doing, I'm actually getting another cell phone because I can't use my regular number because y'all blow it up all the time. But we're going to have the Joe Boo Sports Report hotline. The Joe Boo Sports Report hotline. So that way we'll be able to take in just regular calls. Just regular calls on that line. This way, by having a second phone line, I'll be able to turn it on during the show. And then I can turn it off. So all the haters who want to send me 50 million messages and all that, I just don't answer. I just don't answer. I won't answer them. That's how it goes. But we're going to be doing something, uh, doing some new things to kind of open up to expand what we're doing. But if you are a channel member, A, go to the community tab so you get the link so that way you can be part of the discussion. And you don't have to be a Cowboy fan per se to be a channel member. 
Um, we have Leo. Leo gets a lot of flack and stuff, but Leo's my boy, um, who is an Eagle fan. And we do have some other fans. I know of a Packer fan and a 49er fan that are channel members as well. Um, go there to get the link for the live stream. Also, there's a link there to get registered because like the tailgate members, they'll be getting um, our new shot glass when we order them. Um, we're going to be ordering them probably this week and we'll have our hands in about two weeks. Uh, so we'll be getting those out there because as a tailgate member, you automatically get every new shot glass that we have. You get a starter rack and things. Uh, you get the uh, paddle that's like for four shot glasses to pour because as a Cowboy fan, you know we have to drink. Um, so we'll see you guys then and be looking out for the Joe Boo Sports Hotline. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you real soon. Peace.